sports injury in the knee and for our discussion we have with us dr ravi teja rudra raju consultant sports medicine and complex knee surgeon at apollo hospital jubilee hills hyderabad dr ravi teja has pursued international training in the australian orthopedic association accredited clinical fellowship in sports medicine and complex knee surgery at the university of sydney and also has completed fellowship in sports medicine from cleveland clinic usa at apollo hospital jubilee hills dr ravi teja is involved in practicing sports medicine and arthroscopy surgery he treats sports injury like meniscus tears acl pcl and posterior lateral corner injuries using minimally invasive techniques he specialized in managing complex multi ligament knee injuries and patella femor femoral joint dislocation so welcome doctor to our facebook live session uh, thank you uh, ms jasmin for introducing me good afternoon everyone uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, join live today and uh, share my knowledge on sports injuries in the knee i'm more than happy to kind of take your questions and any queries that you have in terms of helping you out with information and any in any other aspects i can help you with thank you so starting with our question so doctor could you please brief our audience what is a sports injury and what are the common causes of knee injury yeah so the name itself suggests sports injury basically these injuries commonly occur during the sporting activities but it doesn't have to restrict just to the sports it can happen while uh, you are uh, riding a bike or going on a car or probably uh, you know just a small fall can also result in some some of these kind of injuries so uh, although the term says sports but it's a broad term so it it includes a uh, uh, kind of a uh, lot of injuries which involves around the knee and the common causes that if you see in the knee are uh, mostly uh, meniscal tears which are the spring that you have inside the knee and also you have got uh, some ligaments called ACL and PCL which are called anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior cruciate ligaments so basically these ligaments hold the knee in place when they are also torn then uh, you might end up also having uh, trouble in the knee so uh, commonly meniscal injuries and uh, the cruciate ligament injuries are the common in the knee so doctor how do i know if i have torn my ACL so uh, as i just have mentioned to you acl stands for anterior cruciate ligament so uh, if you see the knee joint if the, this is your uh, thigh bone and this is your uh, shin bone there are two ligaments that are kind of inside the joint which holds both the bones together so when you have got uh, the acl tear it is one of the ligament that holds tibia to the femur and when the acl is torn your tibia which is your shin bone translates forwards and then that gives a bit of instability to your joint usually that happens while uh, you're playing soccer or uh, maybe rugby in the western countries but if you see at the indian scenario they are more likely to going to happen when you're playing kabaddi or probably badminton and also quite often we see patients having these tears while having a road traffic accident so doctor what are the symptoms of a meniscus injury so uh, similar to acl injury we have got uh, the meniscus injuries as well so uh, as i just mentioned to you meniscus is something that is kind of a cushion that gives a kind of shock absorber kind of an effect inside the knee so uh, these meniscal tears are quite often in the knee injuries so uh, it can happen in any age group if you see in the younger generation or the younger younger cohort of people who get these kind of injuries are most likely due to sports injuries so while they are playing kind of uh, playing some sports or uh, probably falling uh, from the bike or something but if you see in the middle age it's uh, <clears throat> partly due to uh, a wear and tear that happens uh, as you age as well as uh, partly due to your active lifestyle if you are an active person who wants to play sports you want to be active in your life you might also get uh, meniscal tears so uh, so usually meniscal tears presents as a pain in the knee it could be inside the knee or could be in the outside part of your knee uh, and uh, usually they are not really uh, troublesome unless uh, you know they kind of impinge or kind of uh, flip around and uh, go in inside or the outside part of your uh, knee joint um, unless uh, they are uh, a major tear and uh, it's quite uh, unstable they are usually uh, kind of uh, um, low grade and they heal by itself so um, 
when you have a meniscal uh, tear basically you kind of uh, go through this pain and then if it's not subsiding then only you will uh, come to us to see us why your knee is paining a lot so doctor does knee cap dislocate during sports injuries yeah so similar to uh, meniscus and also uh, acl also the knee cap uh, which we call uh, as patella uh, can also kind of uh, go through traumatic uh, injuries while playing sports uh, generally uh, knee caps dislocate while playing uh, pivotal uh, kind of a pivoting kind of a sport uh, say football rugby or maybe kabaddi when you just twist your uh, knee and your thigh bone twist the other side so that uh, that gives a kind of an enough uh, force to kind of dislocate your patella outside but that's not just the reason why patella dislocates it can be also genetic and also it can be gender specific sometimes female age group or the patients compared to uh, males female have higher predisposition to have a patella dislocation because one uh, there is a gender risk as such and also there are hyperlaxity and uh, other uh, related issues uh, which also contribute towards it and also females have higher q angle which we call it as quadriceps angle due to their wider pelvis they have got increased q angle which also predisposes them to have a risk of uh, patella dislocation uh, and sometimes it can be uh, a very traumatic injury it can happen once or twice and some patients it can uh, happen quite often so it's important to understand what's your anatomy and uh, what uh, pathological reasons you have along with what kind of sport you are playing so it's uh, very important to understand what are the multifactorial reasons that contributes towards this patella dislocation so coming to our next question so doctor what is a shin splint and how is it different from a stress fracture so uh, shin splint and stress fracture present uh, very similarly so basically they present as pain on your shin bone so uh, whenever uh, you kind of if you notice very commonly that, that if you walk long distances or probably you have uh, run for a long distance after uh, quite a long uh, distance running uh, maybe in the evening or tonight you start getting pain over the shin on your bone so that's called the shin splint shin splints usually happen due to trauma to your muscles or probably to the fascia around that bone but whereas stress fracture which is uh, a kind of a uh, fracture as such happens uh, due to micro trauma to your bone this usually happens uh, in people who are at risk the patients who are at risk are uh, soldiers uh, probably long distance marathon runners and also um, uh, maybe uh, osteoporotic people as well so it's a uh, repetitive trauma in a very uh, dysfunctional biomechanical environment that would lead to stress fracture although both present in a similar uh, pattern in terms of pain and other stuff but uh, shin splint usually goes away if you give enough rest but for a stress fracture you need to kind of consult a doctor screen yourself get your x-ray done and see if you have a stress fracture or not and if so you have it then you have to give proper rest for at least 6 weeks to allow your bone to unite and there on then you have to avoid whatever activities that are putting you at risk so doctor how can a sports injury be prevented so uh, first and foremost uh, important aspect of preventing sports injury you need to understand what kind of sport you are playing and uh, you need to also have a consciousness of uh, whether you are fit enough to play that sport say for example if you want to play cricket or soccer definitely you need to have uh, got a good quads as well as you need to be physically fit in order for your body to handle you know the different kind of movements and the different kind of uh, uh, angles that you play it so when you kind of understand what kind of a sport that you are playing then you need to undergo proper training you should not directly go right away to the high intense uh, training or high intense kind of a playing uh, so you need to slowly uh, acclimatize and you need to kind of tell your body that you know you are going to perform a bit better and better every day if you do that probably your body will get accustomed to it and then it will be able to uh, tolerate whatever strain that you put on your muscles and tendons 
also it's important to use right footwear right gear to kind of prevent these injuries once you wear the right gear and the right kind of a footwear most of the times you will be able to handle uh, the different uh, difficult environments that will put your knee in stress and also in terms of having an injury also when uh, when you kind of uh, go through uh, a sport say for example kabaddi or probably uh, uh, cricket or something then you need to understand what are the risk factors if you are a female there's a little bit of risk to have uh, certain kind of injuries so probably it's worthy enough to kind of uh, talk to your trainer and other people before uh, pursuing your uh, career in sports so doctor what should be done immediately after a sport injury so immediately after the sports injury uh, the most important thing is to uh, kind of immediately uh, examine what happened to your uh, knee or what or any other part you know and you need to see what exactly happened usually body responds back by um giving swelling inflammation and pain so that's how you come to know that you are injured once you come to know that then you need to kind of move your joint and see whether it's moving normally if it's moving normally probably it could be a sprain but if you are unable to move your joint and also if you are unable to kind of walk probably that's something that should uh, think or maybe should warn you towards uh, having further examined uh, what happened to your knee or any other joint so once you understand that probably you should uh, immediately do first aid what does first aid in terms of sports injury means so we call it as rice that's a mnemonic we call r i c e so r stands for rest i for icing uh, uh, c for compression e for elevation so you need to give rest to whatever joint you have got injured for at least for a thing around like one or two days to see how you are improving and also immediately you need to put an ice pack at least three times daily for at least 20 minutes so that whatever swelling that's been uh, happening that will resolve and will also give you a bit of comfort and uh, uh, reassurance that you are fine and then comes the compression so in order to avoid having more swelling in the joint that you injured so you need to kind of apply some compression bandage if you have a crepe bandage or maybe any cloth probably kind of wrap it around before you see a doctor so that you at least prevent the swelling to grow further and last is the elevation you need to elevate your leg at your level of your heart probably that happens only when you lie down if you are unable to kind of lie down all the time probably you need to put your leg at the level of your chair so that the swelling doesn't keep going uh you know when you keep your uh, limb in the dependent area so you need to give rest put icing apply compression bandage and keep your leg elevated so can a person walk on a strained knee uh as i just mentioned to you once you have an injury you need to assess yourself so is it a kind of a mild sprain that you have got or is it a severe injury that you have got while playing sport if you think it's a minor sprain you need not worry you need to just apply uh, a bandage or probably a crepe or something and then just observe yourself but you can continue walking but if you have a massive swelling if you are unable to walk and if you think your knee joint is not stable and if you are unable to bend your knee probably it's immediately advisable to kind of come and see a doctor to examine yourself and then uh, confirm that there's nothing wrong with your knee before uh, you continue back to your life so when should a person see a doctor for his or her sports injury so uh, again uh, the answer comes with the previous question so uh, you need to assess yourself first and if you think the injury that you had happened uh, probably due to an accident or probably while playing a major sport and you had a uh, high grade uh, injury if you think uh, that definitely warrants towards seeing a doctor also sometimes initially you might think you are improving maybe in a week or 10 days you might think you are getting better but sometimes patients deteriorate over few weeks and months say for example 3 weeks to 4 weeks you felt better but after that you started feeling that your knee joint is not stable and if you think there's pain while going upstairs 
coming downstairs or maybe you're unable to play back whatever you want to play in terms of uh, games that you're playing so that will also sometimes kind of uh, push you towards getting yourself examined because sometimes these injuries although they are minor and kind of moderate injuries to start with but if you don't treat yourself well initially they will turn into a chronic problem wherein that will lead on to secondary effects on your knee joint which might predispose you to early arthritis of your joint so that's why if you're not improving well if the swelling is not subsiding if your non knee joint is not stable probably these are the things that will kind of uh, warrant you towards seeing a a uh, sports medicine specialist or an orthopedician to get yourself examined uh, before uh, uh, you know getting back to your life so doctor do sports injuries pre- frequently require surgical treatment uh not really uh, most of the sports injuries are sprains or maybe partial tears if you see the most common joints that uh, suffer because of sports are shoulder knee joint and ankle most often you get ankle twists and then you sprain your ankle similarly uh, as i just said you might uh, get hurt while playing uh, cricket or maybe kabaddi or any other common sport and then that might injure your uh, ligaments in the knee but any of these injuries will drive you towards like a kind of a partial strain or probably a sprain and a minor tear so most of times we when we get uh, our patients uh, evaluated by having an x-ray or an mri we see what's the degree of uh, sprain or a tear if it's a minor tear or a partial tear we usually ask them to take a rest let it heal for at least 6 weeks and then we we'll reassess them and ask them to get back to their uh, r- routine life but in some instances wherein patients have complete anterior cruciate ligament tear whether it's acute or chronic we usually suggest them to undergo surgery because as i just have explained in the initial few questions that the anterior cruciate ligament is a major ligament that gives stability to your joint if your joint is not stable enough it's like a bridge which has got no pillars so basically your knee is not stable so that puts uneven loads on different compartments which will not only lead to unstable joint and also and like predispose you to fall down quite often but also in the long term you might end up having osteoarthritis which is again a big problem that you have to deal with in a later date so similarly if you have got some medial collateral or the lateral collateral ligament injuries or probably post lateral corner injuries so these are the key kind of injuries we often fix because the end point is not to uh, help the ligament heal uh, our main goal of doing surgery is to provide you a stable joint and an active joint because these injuries quite often happen in the younger ages and we want you to be active for the rest of your life if you are not stable enough that will not only hamper your lifestyle and the and the kind of uh, daily activities but also puts you at risk in terms of having uh, long term problems so that's why we evaluate in terms of how stable is your knee and what's the degree of your injury and accordingly we uh, suggest some of our patients to undergo arthroscopic uh, ligament reconstructions or probably meniscal repairs or maybe to some extent realignment surgeries a uh, special mention on the patellofemoral dislocation which is a kneecap dislocation uh, previously when patients used to have kneecap dislocations we used to treat conservatively since we have got a lot of advances in the way we manage these patellofemoral dislocations now we arthroscopically fix these uh, patellofemoral dislocation using grafts a uh, minor kind of surgery where we put a scope in and kind of check the uh, knee cap and then fix the knee cap with a ligament onto the thigh bone to make sure the patella does, does not dis- dislocate again so there are uh, very specific indications to which we operate but it is definitely worthwhile having operated if there is an indication so coming to our sir audience question so doctor how do a person know if his or her knee injury is serious uh again uh, it, it goes back to the explanations that i have given in the previous questions so uh, unstable knee is definitely a warrant towards uh, a surgery and definitely uh, any pain that's not subsiding and it's been going on uh, long for a while 
and then you feel uh, that's definitely hurting you and it's not allowing you to kind of do your daily activities probably uh, an MRI would help us to understand what's the reason if it's an ACL tear or a meniscal tear or it could be a uh, multi ligamentous injury which can uh, definitely affect your joint so that's when we kind of uh, take our patients towards surgery and also sometimes patients might have uh, altered biomechanics different anatomies uh, which put these patients at risk so we do realignment surgeries called uh, high tibial osteotomies or uh, um, distal femoral osteotomies wherein doing this kind of realignment surgeries would evenly load the joint uh, so that it doesn't uh, affect a single compartment thereby uh, preventing these patients to uh, um, not go towards osteoarthritis so doctor are there any particular exercises that can help prevent the knee injuries uh, yes definitely in terms of knee we suggest patients to have a healthy quadriceps muscle so we often encourage patients who play uh, kabaddi and uh, cricket or uh, any other sport in, ma in, in fact so we encourage them to uh, strengthen their quadriceps muscles particularly focus on the VMO which is vastus medialis oblicus muscle to have a good strength uh, so that uh, that not only helps uh, knee uh, to kind of evenly bear weight on all the compartments but also keep the patella in place and also to kind of uh, prevent that uh, joint to uh, age early. So doctor who are more prone to the sports injuries? Um, definitely there are a couple of uh, research studies have shown that uh, there are uh, some uh, uh, populations who are at risk and similarly definitely female gender is one of the uh, risk factor for uh, patients who uh, who have uh, this kind of injuries because of other reasons I have just mentioned like uh, increased Q angle uh, hyper uh, ligament laxity and uh, um, uh, also the uh, wider pelvis which uh, also leads to uh, having this uh, knee injuries similarly patients who don't train well like you know uh, they just they are quite interested in playing a basketball or probably they want to play uh, soccer or maybe kabaddi so if you want to play these kind of sports tomorrow your, your body is not really fit enough you need to train yourself you need to stretch well you need to uh, properly do stretching for at least some time let your muscles also kind of uh, uh, prepare to uh, tackle in whatever uh, moves that you do and other things so if you decide to play something or probably if you decide to do uh, this sport maybe it's worthy enough to increase your level of fitness day by day so that after few months you will be able to happily play whatever you want and similarly um, sometimes as I mentioned road traffic accidents that's definitely not in your hand uh, it's multifactorial the velocity of injury as well as your uh, uh, physical fitness both play uh, an important role in what kind of an injury that you might have uh, in terms of your knee. So doctor which muscles help prevent the knee injuries? Generally uh, as mentioned you you know the knee can be extended anatomically knee can be extended by quadriceps muscle so that's why the quadriceps muscle should be in good shape. In terms of your knee flexion your hamstrings help you to flex your knee so that's why you need to focus on your hamstrings. Similarly you need to have good calf muscles to prevent any other injuries to your ankle and other things. So overall you need to properly uh, train your quads other muscles which you know flex your knee and extend your knee. So once you have all these muscles in good shape and strength probably if, even if you uh, fall down most of the injury or most of the pressures can be taken by the muscles rather than injuring your ligaments and the menisci. So doctor, what are the common symptoms of an ACL injury? So uh, generally ACL injury when you have it, you hear a pop and then it comes with intense pain. Once you have it, you have a very acute high level pain as well as your knee will be swollen immediately. So swelling, very severe pain as well as a history of hearing a pop, all three uh, direct you towards having an ACL injury. 
but once you have it then if you are unable to bend your knee and then if your knee is not stable or probably you are unable to walk well if you are unable to walk upstairs come downstairs probably these all factors uh, should raise a suspicion that you might have had an acl injury sometimes these acl injuries can be partial it need not be complete injuries that times some of the symptoms might manifest and some of them might not so uh, so basically you have to keep a check of how you are progressing and if you think any of these symptoms are not resolving after giving enough rest probably you need to see an uh, orthopedic surgeon or a sports medicine specialist to get yourself examined and then if required maybe it's worthy very worthy enough to have an mri done to know uh, what happened to your knee so coming to our sir last question so doctor could you please tell our audience about the facilities provided at apollo hospital jubilee hills hyderabad uh, so apollo uh, hospitals has got uh, a a comprehensive uh, uh, approach towards uh, dealing sports injuries uh, we have got uh, very well trained uh, orthopedic surgeons and as well as uh, sports medicine specialists like us uh, who specifically treat uh, uh, injuries related to sports uh also we have got uh, a state of art uh, physiotherapy department wherein after we treat them they will take them over and then uh, they make sure that these patients rehab well so that they are fit to go back to their uh, work and as well as to the uh, lifestyle of whatever they want similarly we have uh, uh, quite a uh, uh, good department in terms of creating awareness and making uh, patients understand how you can prevent these injuries so uh, uh, we are uh, fully uh, 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 equipped with uh, uh, different teams uh, wherein we can deal uh, high grade uh, multi ligamentous injuries as well as common sports injuries so dear viewers we have come to the end of our session and hope we have covered all aspects If you still have more doubts you can book an appointment with Dr Ravi Deja and clarify your doubts. Thank you doctor for educating our audience in today's session. Thank you very much. It's been pleasure uh, meeting you all and I hope uh, whatever uh, information that I have shared today might help you and uh, prevent uh, you from uh, having these injuries. Please uh, reach out to us in case if you need any help uh, with regards uh, to sports injuries and its related management. Thank you once again. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for more such educative live sessions. Namaste.